All right, on this episode of Bouts Talking Bouts, excited to be talking to an individual who is set to compete at BKFC Prospect Series 1, which goes down on August the 24th. And we've got Leandro Torres stepping into the ring against Harry Cruz and Great Heaven Harry on the show. How's everything going, man? You having a solid enough day so far? Pretty good so far. You know, getting the training um, over here at work. So just trying to multi everything for the rest of the fight coming up. Yeah, and this would seem like a, you know, big opportunity, just this being the inaugural, you know, version of their Prospect Series events and stuff like that. Like, when did, I guess, this bout offer kind of come your way? Like, what was the, I guess, time that this sort of initially got on your radar and everything? Well, you know, my background is professional boxing, and, you know, with boxing being a little bullet as it is, I've been trying to get fights in that for a while and it was kind of hard people that are dogs didn't want to fight me and I actually reached out to um, Carlos who was uh, one of the manager um, for uh, Bear Knuckles for the BFKC um, re- I reached out to him and tried to get some box stuff going and then he came to me with this prospect series and I'm like well as long as I was willing to fight me then I'm, you know, I'm good with it because I haven't fought since my last fight in February so I just, it's just been hard to get opponents. I know in this platform, a lot of people are not talking to anybody. Everybody's willing to fight everybody. So this is what I really like. Yeah, and from what I was seeing on Box Rec, you do have a noticeable amount of amateur and pro experience in glove boxing before transitioning into this sport, as you just kind of outlined there. But I would think that this is a good time for, you know, just the momentum and everything, just kind of noticing that your last fight seeming like a big moment because I saw you at the post saying you finally became a champion when you captured that ABF championship. Can you talk about how important that win over Jean Carlos Prada was for, I guess, galvanizing that confidence? I mean, winning a title is always a big moment, but can you speak to that point? Like, it almost seems like a great time to transition into this newer sport in, like, a confidence kind of context, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I've been in this sport for, you know, five, five, five years, and I, mean, I was won a championship belt. Um, I had a chance with the NBA and uh, Robert Burwell, but it wasn't a title bout. Even though know, I beat him, yeah, because it wasn't a title bout, so they, you know, I didn't get a title that time. So, just to moment this moment, uh, this moment to be able to go in and get this title from an ex champion was, you know, and it was a tough opponent. And, and that, to get it, didn't mean many worth a lot more. And actually, after that fight, I went to the Hall of Fame and Hall of Famers, and I met some BKSC people there. and that was the, really the point as they were talking about how the reviews have reached over views uh, over the UFC. So I was like, wow, well, I man, it's a moment to get in there while I'm still hot. It's starting up before a lot of people start seeing the potential of this platform and start running there, you just get flooded. So I was like, well, let me take my chance. I have nothing to lose. And, you know, I've done great in the boxing world right now. So let me see if I can do both at the same time. Oh, that's interesting. So your plan is to concurrently compete in both bare knuckle and gloved boxing going forward? Correct. Um, but if, if bare knuckle, you know, because uh, if you know the prospect series, uh, Dave Billman is going to be giving contracts out. If he gives me a contract can't refuse, then, you know, glove boxing will be put on at the back burner and, you know, see what I can do with it. So, because this is going to help my views, my fan base. This is getting me to the point that if I do want to return to the boxing world, then I have more leverage to negotiate better deals. Yeah, and that's fair because, I mean, you have fought on platforms that have a level of repute, obviously. Like, I saw you fought on Boxio, Telemundo, and some other platforms for sure. But, I mean, BKFC would seem like a, you know, great platform as well. Like, it seems like they're just a surging kind of brand there. So, yeah, I get what you mean. Like, could be good for just, like, what opportunities it could, you know, create for you and everything. And that opportunity to become a world champion, BKFC, I mean, I'm going to take it. I mean, BKFC is growing. I mean, it's that, uh, owned by Thriller. Um, you know, they do ownership, so they have a lot more revenue behind them. Also, they're just trying to expand. They finally got the first fight in New York, which is a hard commission to get sanctioned. So if all that goes through, that's going to go great. Um, they did going across the country to Europe. Um, they're going to try to start something in South America here soon. So they're, they're really... Reaching out their their their, their band of, of fan base, so it might actually grow something big as the UFC here in the future. So I love to be a part of 
that has this prospect theory and be a, a pioneer of it is a great opportunity all the way around. Yeah, and even based on the wording there, it seems like you're kind of looking at this in like a historical context kind of way almost, just with this being that inaugural kind of event. And I mean, it would seem like a cool event because like the onus is really on the fighters to kind of like have the impressive performance and then potentially get the longer term BKFC contract after like that judging panel almost kind of a context there. So, I mean, yeah, it would seem like a historical appreciation standpoint you're coming from on that like does it mean something to you know be a part of this inaugural kickoff event for their prospect series correct yeah i mean it's an honor and it's like an opportunity that most you don't ever encounter in their life so i'm going to take it and you know it may be able to lead the way for other people to see what they're you know they're doing transition from the boxing world and not doing well into this world um i actually had a I was noticing that like some of your past opponents share in that distinction like I mean you referenced it there like talking about Tommy Turner and he's gone on to really do a lot and only a pair of bare knuckle bouts but I also saw you fought you know Wayna Reed who previously fought Tony Soto and everything in BKFC and is also on this prospect series card as well so it seems like there's some tie-ins to your glove boxing days and the bare knuckle a bit yeah there is it's just a small world you know in the fight where a lot of people you know may not have an opportunity, they wanted the boxing world, either to the record or just the notoriety or just, and so the fair enough was really giving off a second opportunity, a second life to really, you know, get on scene. Uh, one of the, you know, the big example I use for that is, is Lawrence O'Hunt, you know, he was an MA fighter, you know, I wasn't think he was, you know, five and nine or before he came there, so his fighting career was not really going anywhere. And then he went to Baranoco, and now he's a two-time, uh, two-weight class world champion. And I guess I think it's one of the second pound-for-pound fighters in the Baranoco world. So it really gives people uh, a second chance in their fight career, or that 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 able to exposure to become something great. And you were talking earlier about, you know, inspiring people to want to make the transition from glove boxing over to this sport. Like, I guess, in terms of getting into the minutia of that, like, what specifically have you done to, I guess, transition your skills into this new sport as you're ready for the Bare Knuckle debut? Well, my background in martial arts, uh, hand-to-hand combat, so I have a little background in, in that kind of training, but uh, mostly now is getting back into the, 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 the trapping of hands, I mean, arms. Uh, conditioning that, that the knuckle, the skin, um, the different, you get more accurate with the punches because you can't punch anywhere, you know, without gloves on because you'll destroy your hand in a matter of a second. So it's just really training the, the very aspect of the hand for the bare knuckle box. And everything else is relatively the same when it comes to skill set. Uh, it's just, I tell people that the difference is because I had to come back home from martial arts. It's, it's not typical boxing, it's more like like, you don't really want to get cut. So then you don't know one them score because the one point they score could be the end of the fight. So you really want to be careful and more defensive uh, comments of what you're doing than more being offensive because one getting clipped and this and here could be, you know, the, the turnaround point of a fight. Yeah, and I appreciate you giving the insights in that regard because in terms of, like, the hand galvanizing, I find it can almost go one way or the other with the fighters. Like, some people really swear by some of the techniques of, like, you know, working with, like, the wooden Muay Thai board or gripping the sand, just as, like, a couple examples there. But then some people almost just scoff at it entirely, and it's like, ah, I don't do any of that kind of stuff. Like, I just do my normative, like, martial arts slash combat sports kind of training there. So interesting that you kind of go the route of, you know, galvanizing the hands as an additional measure in the bare knuckle camp. But I mean, it's important. I mean, anything else you, in, in boxing, you use strength of the core to take body shots. 
So it, it just we want to strengthen the hands because it's the more important, it's the only weapon you have. So if you break it, we don't have anything. Uh, another aspect a lot of people don't realize is that, and I tell people in, in boxing, you can't punch as hard as you want to in bare knuckles. You gotta know how to take off because, you know, first off, you have no hand wraps, no gloves, nothing's really, if the other they're not gonna protect the opponent, but it's really protect your hand. Um, so, and I tell people, even people think it's more dangerous, which actually it's not because you can't punch me as hard or repetitively with gloves. So, yeah, the aspect I tell people, you can, you can act stronger in your own hand and break your hand very easily, so you have to not only take care of your hand and take something off, but, but you got to strengthen them by different training, by the sand, the, the push of the knuckles, you know, and the big thing is technique. You know, most times you have a glove, you don't make a tight fit. Now, you have no glove, you got to make sure when you punch something, your hand is a nice, tight fit ball, or you can, you can break the ball in your hand very easily. Yeah, and it seems like, like you were saying before, the defensive measures are especially paramount because, like, even a technique that could seem just like a flicking kind of jab or just even an inconsequential kind of strike, like, it could turn into, like, a big cut that ultimately ends the fight. So, I mean, defense definitely, you know, paramount in all combat sports, but it seems like especially paramount in bare knuckle. Right, correct. And that's what's good with my style as a boxer. I'm very, you know, my, my dick is right I remember losing fight so that works, you know, so this bare knuckle works in my kind of style. If I was like a Mexican style fighter, a brawler, it won't really work in my style because you really can't, you, you shouldn't and you uh, shouldn't and won't take hits in bare knuckle because, I mean, you're going to just stretch your face up. I mean, knuckles cut just like razor blades. So if you think you sit there and take punches, you could, but I mean, also the dominant call on fight um, because of the cuts, you're, you're, you're receiving back of the head, top of the head. So and people don't realize that, that you know, your face is easy can bleed and get cut very easily. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, you kind of talk about the Mexican style there. I kind of wanted to tie it into a bit of a question here because, I mean, I was seeing in the bio there you have moved to Florida and very much have kind of been out of that space for a bit. But the vibe I get is you also very much represent, you know, Puerto Rico and seeing you were kind of born there. Is that sort of, you know, a fair way to characterize it? Like you strike me as a guy that would, you know, really like fly the flag in that kind of regard and everything like that. Like, do you take a level of pride in, you know, showcasing the, you know, nationality? And is it almost like as much as an individual effort, you're also representing for them by proxy in a kind of regard? Of course. Um, of course. Well, definitely because, you know, I am 100% Puerto Rican. I was, I was, not, I was born and raised there. Uh, and then I came here to Florida because of the military base closing down. Um, it, it just, you know, the honor is, you know, we're one of the very small island and we're one of the only few people that had a world champion in every single weight division, even our numbers are very, very small. So it's very prideful um, when, you know, representing the flag and, and, and Puerto Rico. And, and, and actually, if I know that Latino, I know it's going to be difficult because Latino fighters are very uh, tough fighters. And uh, towards the Argentina, so he's going to have a lot of his pride and, and wave his flag and, you know, they have Argentina behind him. So it's going to be a good, you know, Latino to Argentina fight, Puerto Rico versus Argentina. Yeah, well said. And in directing the focus to your opponent, I was kind of checking out some info on Torres and I mean kind of an interesting fight because you're coming at it from the glove boxing background and I'm seeing he has five pro MMA bouts to his credit and everything like that. Like are you a guy who immerses yourself in a certain level of tape study on your opponents? Is it almost like kind of difficult to do that being that it's an entirely new combat sport? Both of you are kind of like intersecting to like meet each other within. I'm, I guess I'm curious to get insights in that regard. Well, you know, something I learned, you know, when my fight with Olympia, uh, which way I just about that tape study is good, but it's you know, like anything else is just a tool. You know, you can't go and base your whole game plan off of tape study because people do evolve and get better or they might be you know, who they're fighting, they might change their style or their game plan. So uh, a tape study is good and, you know, I've seen stuff with him and, and look at him a little bit and, and study him a little bit, but you can see some characteristics and and aneurysm that they do, but it's just food for this stop kind of deal. You still want to go in there being cautious. You still want to see what they're up to, what, the, what their plan is going to be, how they're going to try to uh, attack you, and, you know, you go from there. You you don't want to just say, this is all on B-Ball, this is what I do to this guy, but like, no, I'm out. Well, now you got to see what it is going to do, and then you, you adjust to that. That's that's how you get better in this game and you evolve. You just go off face a video, what they're doing, that sometimes works, sometimes does it, it is a case-by-case case thing, just like everybody else. 
Yeah, no, that's a good way to look at it. It kind of lends itself to some adaptability of something, you know, the fighter brings to the table deviates from what you've seen from prior fights. I guess part of the reason I brought that up is because sometimes in this sport, and this is like a layman's kind of perspective and also a simplistic way to kind of boil it down, but I did mention the boxing and MMA kind of backgrounds. I would think in like a simplistic, you know, distill it down kind of way, like maybe, you know, his opportunity in this fight, or I guess primary strategy would be to kind of go with that like active clinch like crowd you and in fight more so whereas maybe it might behoove you to fight at range is that kind of how this fight almost breaks down for you in a certain sense or not so much correct yeah because i mean he works the clinch and i mean i have a lot of experience with the clinch myself i'm a, I'm a, I'm a former coming by but you know, again, back to what I was saying, but it's more like fencing. You don't really don't want a crowd to be in there. And, and, and I want to fight my fight, not his fight. So I want to keep my range, my distance, and really try to uh, pick them apart and see what it happens. Because I have an opportunity to come in and, and attack that's one thing, but just going in there and trying to fight his fight is not going to work. We're having to stay to my strength and, you know, my boxing strength and, and stay at range. Um, I have three long arms. Of all my opponents, I use that long reach. So it will behoove me to use that to my advantage against him, and then just see, you know, see the, the chinks in his armor as I as I tear him apart to see an opportunity to take him out. Yeah, and just an interesting effort here because it, it seems like you really have like certain unique proclivities in the ring, like even in the context of being a southpaw, which is already, you know not to be punny, but already unorthodox to begin with. Like, it seems like even within the Southpaw idiom, you kind of have, like, your own sort of unique kind of tells and things that you do. So kind of interested to see that in, like, a bare-knuckle context and how you transition it over and everything. Correct. And I'm very excited to see how it goes, too. Um, I've, trained it. I've, I've, I've trained with, you know, boxers. I've sparred with MMA fighters. I've sparred with different people. And, um... It, 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 again, it, it's a whole different type of world and sport, and, and and a lot of people would think it's because they're a boxer, they have the upper hand, but that's not, that's not always the case. You have to go in there and look at it like you enter the sport. You are basically a newbie again. So, you know, I just I had to go in there. I have my experience, but I also realized, okay, this is something different. I got to be able to adapt and adjust to the rules. Um, I really like that, you know, you can work the clinch. Um, something that I... I I couldn't do before is really grab and hold it and hit. But now you have more opportunity to do that. So that's going to be fun, uh, fun to, uh, to utilize. And I guess just like speaking to like the people you've been working with recently, I'm curious to get some insights into that because I did some research on you and at least in the past, like it would seem like dead game fight school was where you were working out. Like I saw you had a, couple of picks like sparring former world champion Luis Colazzo. Like is that still the primary space you're getting in work at there? Yeah, so that's my primary gym I'm working out right now as well. I'm almost have on my bike here. Yeah, good to have that consistent kind of core group to you and stuff like that just seems so important. But I guess one last thing I wanted to kind of touch on here. Like I actually found it interesting that you at least like per the time I was seeing this post, this is about like pseudo like half a year ago like around that range but seeing that you also have a career path and being a forest ranger and wildland firefighter is that something you're still doing and if so curious for you to give some more insights into that because it sounds interesting um yeah it is interesting what, what, what I'm doing is um, I'm not working for the state anymore but I still do go out um do the wildland uh, the western fire still call it do that I'm going to be on that um, I got a I moved into a uh, heavy uh, diesel mechanic. But with, with Florida Forest Service, it, it, it's a fire fight, but you're fighting, you know, forest fire. So when Florida catches on fire in somebody's property or state board, we actually fight it with not water, but with dozers and uh, clouds. And we create fire lines, so the fire doesn't increase. The interesting thing is we are one of the only people allowed to fight fire with fire. So once I create a fire line, I can come with a fire pot which is, is a, is a pot of fuel, and I light it, and I can make my own fire line. And what the people don't know, when fire, you create your own fire, it was actually two fires come together. And when you do that, it burns all the fuel out. So the fire, you use fire to take out another fire, which is pretty interesting. So, but with the Western fires, we do get deployed to go to, uh, to California, Alaska, Washington. So I'm still in that. So when the, when the season comes, I'll go uh, west and fight fire. 
yeah, that's interesting, man. Definitely love to hear that for sure. And I love the way that you describe it. Like it sounds like there's a real curiosity and, you know, fascination with it and everything like that. So yeah, no, cool to hear for sure, man. But definitely want to be mindful of your time and schedule, Harry. I appreciate you making time and giving great insights throughout what should be a very interesting fight here. But just in being mindful of your time and everything, is there like a final parting thought you might want to add as we're kind of wrapping up here, man? Well, like, like I was saying, everybody, you know, you know, sometimes you got a risk. And life, you know, is all a risk. So you take the risk and you reap the reward. So, it's, again, a lot of officers think I'm crazy or think it's dangerous. But, you know, sometimes you got to take that risk to see what the reward because, uh, like I said, I, I'm in a good space in Boston, the championship and everything on my team. Uh, I'm taking the risk to see what I'm made of. And, and actually, you know, if you love to fight, you'll take any platform to fight. So, if it was MMA, bare knuckle, or just boxing, I mean, I enjoy fighting. So, if I have the opportunity, I'm always going to take it. I greatly appreciate you, you know, allowing me to come on the, uh, at your show and, and, and talk a little bit about my journey and it was about to go down August 24th. Yeah, I mean, definitely great getting to, you know, get the insights from you and, you know, get some details on the story so far. But the next chapter in all of that unfurling on August 24th, as you outlined there. And yeah, definitely excited for this Leandro Torres fight and the entire BKFC prospect series kickoff card by proxy but again to reiterate thanks for the time and for coming on man hopefully the first of a few interviews here but until then you have a good rest of your day harry thank you uh, oh really appreciate it and the best part is after the fight the next possible day to be a really normal card so this is gonna be fun i'm gonna stay the next day and watch the actual card um i want to see because somebody's the test that my fight in the future is um i don't know if you know go go um you know we're the same weight class so it's kind of interesting that you know, uh, even though the fight is at 166, they would find that, but it's the lightweight division. Um, I'm going to be going to the welterweight. Um, the same them fight for the title that we seeing, what competition I'll have next in the future. So that'll be interesting fight to watch all of them. The, uh, the 25th. Yeah, very intriguing point to end things off on, and I think very much speaks volumes to, like, what you want to achieve in this combat sport. And, yeah, it should be a great couple days for bare knuckle action no doubt so very much looking forward to that and counting down the days but until then you have a good rest of your day man thank you yes sir have a good one